Where is the patience? Or a boy, boy, you don't know what's the difference. It done it too much. Talking looted and violence. Repeating the same thing. If you check, I'm not madness. We need a solution. Time for some action. Too much talk, talk, committee, no, they function. The answer we they find is the inside me and you. Okay. Now it's time for all of us to talk and do. Come on. Talking on the change and this is all the time for action. Yes. Talking on the solve and Timmy, Dakola. Let's go. Yeah. So talking on the change and This is yeah. all the time for action. That is talking to Banky W2 Baba Timmy Dakolo as well as YJ. Um, this is still the Coffee Gang on Hot FM 93.3. And right now it's time for the Hot Topic segment on the Coffee Gang. And of course, we already let you know that we are going to be having a guest today. But remember, Nigeria's presidential election campaigns have officially started ahead of the 2023 general elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has cleared 18 candidates to run for president. And we also have 4,223 candidates also running for federal positions in the February 2023 election. Today, we have the spokesperson for NNPP as well as um, um, uh, Kwankoso presidential campaign. We have Barrister Ladipo Johnson in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you in our studios today. So the first question I would ask you, uh, congratulations, campaigns have begun is NNPP ready for 2023 election? Yes, we are. Thank you very much. We are ready and um, we are preparing even more. Um, at the moment, um, we, I think this week, uh, you know, this weekend you tend to forget um, today's Monday. Yes, <laughs> because it's a bank holiday. Yes, this week I think the Presidential Campaign Council will be announced and then. We intend to roll out and present a manifesto to the people of the country in the form of a social contract. Um, that might be next week. I'm not sure. It might be this week or next week. And then after that, um, activities will kick off. Um, you have different campaign events, events, um, town hall meetings, things like that, and then um, rallies as well. All right. So now uh, I wanted to. I, well, the reason I asked you uh, how prepared uh, NNPP was was somewhere, some, sometime around June you were announced. I don't know if that was true on uh, social media that you were supposed to be the vice president uh, to Kwankwa. So whatever happened to that? Was that a miscommunication or misinformation? Or at some point uh, the, the NNPP decided to change their minds on that? No, um, it was. Um in, act, it, in actual fact, it took place. Um, you know, um, we keep developing as a country, and um, at that stage, it was um, what was called a placeholder. Oh, okay. Um, consultations were still going on at that moment as to where um, the vice president would come from, who it would be, uh, he or she, all sorts of things. But um, at that time, to meet with the INEC um, deadlines, uh, my name was presented um, as an insurance policy. Okay, I get that. Now, talking about the insurance policy and you being uh, the placeholder, and uh, that, that was when it generated a lot of conversation about Pita Obi and Kwankwaso becoming a group. How did it make you feel, though, that at the end of the day, you were not announced as the, the, vice, the, the vice for Kwankwaso? Would it have been good if you were announced as the vice? Uh, it would have been good if I was announced as a successor to Bill Gates. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, uh, I was not in doubt that um, I was a placeholder. We, we knew what we were doing. It's all about teamwork, and we were working together. And indeed, um, even when the OB... Um, Obi Kwankoso partnership came up. I was a member of the three man committee. Uh, we had three people on both sides. 
So yes, I was privileged to be there. We knew what was going on at each stage, and um, yes, we're where we are today. Mm. Okay. But talking about the partnership, some um, people also argue that the reason why Crown Cross was being spoken about a whole lot was because of this um, assumed partnership that was supposed to happen with Peter Ruby. No, you see, um, when we say some or people said or whatever, Nigeria is Nigeria. A lot of the things we say and are saying here is because we're in the southern part of the country. Uh, in no way, and I am not here, that's not my style, I don't boast. In no way would um, you have a Kwonkozo, except in exceptional circumstances, a Kwonkozo um, deputizing um, for an OB in political parlance. They're, 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 uh, regarding the experience and whatever you have. I don't know. Most people, a lot of people in the South do not know who Kwonkozo is. He was, um, just let me run through it very quickly. Yes, go ahead. 17 years, civil service, engineer, um, constituent assembly, governor, four years, lost his re-election, minister for defense for three years. Three years. Under Obasanjo. Um, senator? S uh, no, not yet senator. Mm -hmm. He was now um, sent as envoy to show diplomatic experience. Envoy to Darfur and um, Somalia. Then he was um, he was member of the board of the NDDC, representing the Northwest. And he resigned from the board, saying that there's too much sharp, too many sharp practices and stuff. He resigned from that. Governor again. Again. Senator, four years. So when you get that that when we look at public service experience, none of them, not um, the APC man, not even the person who was vice president twice, doesn't have other. He doesn't have legislative experience. Konkoso has all those across board. Now, let me touch something sensitive, even before you ask. The clamor from the eastern part of the country and from people who feel, oh, the Igbos have not produced an executive president. Let us be fair. Let us, you understand? Yes. There's that clamor. It is the same clamor in the north. They'll tell you that a Hausa man hasn't ruled. Because they feel They've like it's the Fulani. Hausa Fulani. Fulani. Mm -hmm. But over here, we just put them together. We say it's Hausa Fulani. That they've been in government. The other one is that we say in the South here, because I'm a Lagos boy, yeah. we say in the South here that, ah, the, a northerner is ending his eight years, so let it come back to the South. But over there in the South, the in the North, they're saying that the South has ruled for 14 years. The North for 10 years. That's Buhari, 8 years. Yadua, 2 years. Um, Obasanjo, 8 years. Jonathan, 6, six years. years. So that if it comes back to the south, let's say for another 8 years, that means the north will be on 10, the south will be on 22 or something. So you can see that when we talk about ourselves, you know, uh, this, that, that, you, you have to look at the... Uh, if we want to balance it, you'll have to look at the country as a whole, know what the sentiments are in different parts of the country before we start to make sentimental things. But by and large, mm. I believe that um, rotation, all these things are there because there's no fairness and equity in the country. That's why people feel cheated and everything. I agree with that. But at the end of the day, we have to balance things with um, competence, um, capacity, and um, who will move us forward at any given time. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's a key, that phrase, at any given time. The person who will move us forward in wartime might not be the person that can move us forward in peacetime. 
You understand? Let's even assume that all politicians want the best for Nigeria. Let's assume that. Let's give them that. If that is it, will your policies take us forward at this time? Or will your policies take us... You, you understand? Yes, yes, now, seeing that um, we, we have not seen your manifesto, exactly, and we've yeah. not really heard what Konkwaso is going to do, uh, which I feel at some point, I've, I was feeling like at this time, Konkwaso's manifesto should have been out. Well, most of them haven't. The yes, person, I know the APC the person, is PDP. Is, uh, is, yes, yeah, is, 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 uh, Atiku Atiku Abaka. Come, yes. yes, but why is it taking so long for a manifesto that you probably have been nursing for a very long time? Well, you have to know that um, the miracle that has happened has happened in the space of like four or five months. And when you say miracle, what do you that mean? That means the coming together of the NNPP. Okay. You, you, you understand? Yes. The NNPP, yes, it is an old party, the new Nigeria People's Party. It's been there for 20-something years. But it's just come out to light because um, Kwonkozo and a lot of people moved into the party. And uh, as I said, that's, uh, that was about May, June, or May, May or so, March, April, March, April, April May, yeah. yeah. That's when it happened. So it's just been a few months. And the other thing that... Um, the pundits have to realize is that this election is like uh, unlike any other. Normally, we would have primaries around November, December, and you have elections in February. But now you have five months, October, November, December, January, February. And for those, forgive me, I'm going to throw a stone, for those who may have not, no, who might not have stolen um, government money, it's so expensive. You understand? So you have to pace yourself, know how you're taking your message to the people of the country. And, um, okay, uh, it's campaign um, period, and yeah. um, you know parties are getting ready. What are the structures your party has put in place, knowing fully well that you have three strong candidates: Peter Obi, Tinubu. An article, especially a person of article from the north, where Kwan Kwan so is from. Remember, Kwan Kwan so, uh, there is no political party yet. There is no state your party is holding yet. Even the last election in Oshun, your candidate lost. So, what have you put in place to win this election? Knowing fully well with these three strong candidates you have. Well, if you say, um, especially in the northern part of the country, all I'll say to you, especially when you're talking about Kwonkozo and Atiku, um, Waziri Adamawa, all I'll say to you is um, talk to, randomly, talk to either the person selling cigars or the person doing shoe shine. Talk to the average northerner on the street and find out. I tell you, perform that exercise. Eight out of ten will tell you it is a Kwonkozo, not an Atiku. Let me tell you, the North do not, um, they're not people, I'll say, have a party. They follow individuals. When it was time, they followed Buhari. Not everyone would do it, you understand, but I'm saying majority. So, but back to your question, don't forget that this same Konkozo that you're talking about, <laughs> in 2014-15, in 2014, he was run up to Buhari, uh, at the primaries, when we came together to start the APC. And um, go and find out what happened in Jigawa, even in Zamfara. Go and find out, amongst other places, of course, Kanu. Go and find out the influence he had, or he brought to bear, in making sure that those governors got in at that time. Right? So, yes, because it is the NMPP, you don't have a sitting governor. But I tell you, well, even if we talk about that, there's been more movement into the NMPP when the NMPP, when Konkoso went in, regarding so-called people with structures, I'm talking about senators or what have you, than since OB went to labor. You get it? It's out of that movement that you had Shekerao moving out again. But people like that, key people, 
Look, there's nothing wrong in being very strong. I keep saying it in one part of the country. He doesn't owe you any explanations. It is you who are the analyst that needs to say, okay, this election is not just about Lagos. It's about the whole of Nigeria. Okay, there's that um, point. And there's the other point as well that uh, APC government as well is ruling Kano. And uh, Ganduje is, of course, uh, you know as well that Ganduje and Kwankwaso, uh, they probably can't walk on the same streets like when it comes to politics. Oh, no, I mean like, I, yes, I know. <laughs> but like when it comes to uh, politics and how to shear the city of Kano as well. And uh, APC is another great force in this election come 2023. There's Ganduje, there's um, Atiku Abakar, there's also... Uh, 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 your, 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 your flag bearer, uh, Conquaso. Now, how do you think this is going to play out? Now, I rem I also realize that you've talked a lot about, uh, northern politics that I quite understand because I worked there for a bit. Now, when you look at it and uh, how does Conquaso come, apart from Kano alone, how does he take over the southern part of Nigeria? Because it's only Kano right now that seem to be, you know, vibrating. No, for Chris, um, you're making that mistake. Okay. Um, Google, Google North Central now. Okay. You see what happened in Plateau State yesterday. Okay. And, and the same. All the, I think the same so thing also happened, happened with Peter Obi. We'll look at um, Bochi. Okay. We'll look at um, um, especially Nasarawa and look at Niger State. That's the North Central. I mean, Bochi is not North Central. Benway, I was talking. Yes. About. Yeah. Then go to the northeast where Atiku is from. Look at what happened in Andamawa. Look at what happened in Bornu, in Shetima State, where Zulum mistakenly, I say mistakenly, tried to close our office. Um, in fact, they closed the office two days before um, Konkozo was meant to go there to open the office. It was the people of Bornu that got out onto the streets and started to say, what nonsense. Because in 2015, when they had problems, when the Boko Haram scourge started, Konkozo adopted 100 orphans. In Bornu then. I'm in, yeah, in Bornu then. Has he done anything in the south? In the south. He's done it. Look, even in Oshu, there's a village, there's a place in Oshu where he built, I think it's like, a, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact name, an institution. Someone from Oshu told me that if that was when they were, he's in PDP, yeah. the delegates thing, that if there's just one vote for Konkoso from Oshu, in the PDP primaries, that it will be his because he built so, 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 so in their own um, whatever. And he's done scholarships around the country, not just Kano. When it comes to education, you understand? Yes. He, there, there's no, I don't know who, maybe a private individual, but when we're talking about people who've been in government or whatever, I don't think there's anyone that has done that. And that's why you see the craze. You see, when people keep staying, only in Kano. You you have even said only in Kano. The other person that interviewed me, the other day, they said Kano and maybe two other states. I said maybe. Oh, no. I'm not saying. I, I, I mean that the popularity for Kwankwaso at some point surged mm. in Nigeria, most especially at the beginning of the year. It surged. No, the, and the, at some the point, the popularity. Stop. Let me tell you what happened. Yes. The popularity, when you say it surged, maybe on social media. Yes. Because. Those who are on social media, that is the OB people, the younger people, at that time were tweeting, oh, Konkoso Vice um, will be this. And I said to people, I said, it's good. They've brought the name Konkoso on social into the houses and the homes and workplaces of southern Nigeria. But do you think that so social media called can also play a major role, seeing that it actually did in 2015? Yes, yeah, social media plays a role in trying to in especially in influencing you understand it plays a role in that i have a friend he's um, a brilliant um Igbo, Igbo young man and he 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 consults with us as well so at that time he got taken by everything and said oh you know please Phone, R we call him RMK, Rabbi Musa Kwankozo. Okay. Phone RMK and let him agree to work with OB. Look, Nigerians will be grateful. And I, and I said to him, I said, my brother. He said, then he said, let's have um, a space or whatever on Twitter. On, space, on Twitter. Yes. And that um, he will see that most of the youth will beg him 
to be running me to. And I told him, I said, that's good. I said, but can you help me give those um, boys pushing wheelbarrows and those selling onions and the millions and millions of them there also a um, Twitter account so that they too can vote on this? Then he kept quiet. So I always say, let's... You understand? Is that, is that friend uh, Dr. Namani? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, okay. Because I know Dr. Namani is also... Uh, he's from Enugu State okay. and he's a big supporter for... Uh, 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 Kwankwaso, Kwankwaso as well. He's, he started the whole movement in Enugu, but he lives in Abuja. So I was thinking maybe he was the one you were no, referring the to. The younger person I'm mm. talking about. So let's talk yeah. about Right. The... Um, let me hold your thought okay. for a second. Remember, this is the hot topic on the Coffee Gang, um, Hot, hot FM 93.3. And today, uh, we have Mr. Ladiko Johnson Esquire, the spokesperson for NNPP Kwankwaso Presidential Campaign Council. And remember, if you have any question, remember, um, you can call on 081. 824-26591 or 081-8008-9933 as well as 012-523-933 to ask any question that you have for Mr. Ladipore Johnson. Um, also, you can send your WhatsApp messages to 081-8008-9933. So about two weeks ago, uh, there is this online voting that, you know, some people did, you know, I don't want to mention their name. And then your candidate became uh, the last uh, uh, um, person to have the number of votes. What's your take on that first? Before I ask my second question. I thought it was a sham. Uh, we made a press release regarding it. Um, what are the parameters? Who are the people that you contacted? Was it all around the country? If you're doing it on Twitter, tell us. It was on. Well, you said it. It was online, so no problem. Okay. But, but your up. candidate has the, the lowest number. Now let me zero it into. He doesn't have the lowest number of votes. There are many others <laughs> that said they they formed less than one point something percent. So <laughs> let me take you to the next. My next question. Now there yeah. has been this movement in Nigeria, and it's not just in southeast. It's in southwest, south south, even not northern part of the country. The obedient movement. Now, you've, we've seen Nigerian youth come out saying that this is who we believe can, you know, give us our country back. And remember that your candidate wants, wants, wants Obi to be his deputy, you know, though it didn't go well. What's your take on that? that Nigerian was, youth. There's a good movement going on, the Obi Dati movement. Yes. It's good. We've had our movement since. We've not seen Hang any. Hang on. You, you, because, right? We didn't bring it on social media. The Kwankwasia movement. So how do we know if on. we don't bring it on social hang, media? Hang on. No, no, no. no. Social media is not the only one. Okay. Come, come, okay. come February 25th. You, now, you see, you are going to, there are going to be some people who will say in February that, ah, they rigged this election. Because they've been fed with the fact that there's only one movement going on. You understand? And it's a dangerous thing. When you, when you are talking about what is happening, let it be known that, yes, this... Um, movement poll mm. or whatever is an online poll. This thing is there. This is let it be known plainly. We sampled maybe 2,000, 3,000 people. We sampled 5,000 people. Don't let people read something and feel that oh, it's the whole country that was sampled. You understand? It, it's, it's a dangerous thing because as I keep saying. That there are many, many people. Okay, for instance, let's look at Lagos. Look at Lagos. I am from Lagos. We've had, I'm the Kwankwasia coordinator in Lagos. Forget NMPP. Right? Yes. I'm, I've been the Kwankwasia coordinator in Lagos since 2013. So, we haven't had the opportunity to test the strength of Kwankwasia at... Uh, national poll general elections you know as it, as i said he came second to buhari yeah. in the primaries and everything now the movement is there we know what we're doing we're doing it fine tell me tell me just like in the look whether we like it or not unfortunately a lot of the politics of nigeria is still religious based and ethnic based unfortunately we shouldn't be there but it is right tell me if you look at let's take lagos the um, voting demographics of lagos yeah 
the eastern people of eastern extraction constitute some 30 something percent, percent if not 40 of those who are going to vote people of arewa extraction constitute 20 something to 30 percent of the voting population in lagos right then us yorubas people from different places as well will form maybe the remainder or the majority of one, as one block now when if people now vote according to ethnic lines or whatever will you be surprised if concourse clocks 25 percent in lagos which he will I'm just he saying, will. You, you understand? <laughs> no, I'm telling you as okay. a politician. I understand. Will. Okay. So, will, will you be surprised? In the same way, if you go into um, Plateau State, even before they do the rally, I'll tell you that Obi will have a showing. Because there are lots of Igbos trading there. And also, there are lots of Christians. It's majority Christian states. So, we know what is going on. So, you're there doing your no, math. There, yes, of course. All right. So, as a no spokesperson magic. for N NMPP, um, there's a lot of security issues in the country presently, yeah. and uh, there's the agitation from, uh, you know, uh, Namdi Kanu's pointed as a, a yeah. IPOB, yeah. and then there's Sunday Bo mm -hmm. uh, in the West, and then of course there's the, uh, is it ISWAP these days or is it Boko Haram, whatever it is that's happening in the North. Seeing that he has, uh, you know, he was in defense at some point. What? How do you think you intend to tackle insecurity? Thank you very much. The first thing is that. He is um, equipped to do it. You know, the, the one thing I always say when we talk is that we need someone with capacity, you understand, but also someone who has the political will to get things done. And that is Kwankoso. And that is why he could never have won primaries in a major party. I always say it everywhere. That is because his fellow senators and governors or whatever know that he is a no-nonsense person and that he bats and fights on behalf of the poor and on behalf of the working classes in the country. Now, there's a difference between the terrorists and those who are agitating yeah. for nationalism. You understand? And in that view, let me throw a stone. I keep praying that Peter Obi will go to Anambra State to go and campaign you understand he should start from there so that we know that he's brought the um, ipop people to realize because that's part of the problem some people will tell you when they're looking at it i don't want um, people to start throwing stones at me but uh, but uh, Kong Kong has not campaigned in lagos yet he comes to Lagos all the time. He's no, sorry, in Kano. Sorry, he has not campaigned in Kano. He was in Kano. No, he that, goes to Kano, on, but he has not on. campaigned in Kano. If you're saying, I, if you're saying, because I saw this conversation on social hang media. On, yes, on. yes. One campaigns hadn't started. Yes. Kwankoso was in Kano last week. Peter Obi has on. been in Anambra as well, to but he has not campaigned. To, to open, no, I, I was just saying I'm looking forward to it. Okay. To, to open offices, you understand, in some local governments. He did that on his way to, um, he, yeah, he went to Kaduna, you understand, on his way back. You know, and we see the crowds, even last, um, just, was it yesterday, day before yesterday? The day one before of, yesterday, one just. Of the senatorial candidates in Kanu, Kanu South. You should have seen the crowd. So there's no doubt about that. But you don't think it's the same crowd? No, the same crowd no, no, no. that goes to support no, this no, Mr. No, A no, goes no, to support no, Mr. No, B. No, because no. these Someone days... Someone said that to me. Hang yes, on, hang on. Someone yes. said that to me. Do you know the people who benefit from that? That is the two older parties or oldest parties. Because I tell you, let the PDP people start throwing stones and the APC people. They don't have any campaign without paying their people to turn up. And you're sure I, of that because I am, I am sure I because I was a member of the PDP, I was a member of the APC. Forget it. I'm not saying OB does it. But when you see any red cap person anywhere, they are his people. And you know Konkozo, he's a he's a funny man. He's also when a red cap person. Yes, that's uh, white and red Those yes. are colors. When he comes, if he's coming to Lagos, he will not send you a penny. He won't say Ladipo, take money for mobilization. Never. He wants to know how weak you are or how strong you are. 
if it comes to you and you only have two twenty people to turn up, that is Lagos. That's the picture. You understand? So um, all that um, shifting. Okay, let's move up. Let's bust them to Nasarawa. Let's bust them to. It doesn't morning, happen. Right? Hello. Good morning. Happen. Hello. Hello. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Cyril. All right, welcome, Cyril. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I see. I have a question. I want to ask the spokesman of the NPC. Yes, yes go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, first question I want to ask. You say anywhere you see red cab or whatever, say that's where they throw money and all of that. And I thought no, 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 that wasn't what he said. I didn't say that. No, I didn't no, say no, that. He said, he said, he said, he said, when that PDP and APC, when you have gathering, that they pay people to do, uh, they pay people for the gathering. Mobilization. I, think, I don't know if I'm getting right. Yes, he did that. Yeah, yeah so, sir, so with all due respect, sir, do you want to tell me that your presidential candidate, which is uh, Dr. Raju Konkoso, was a part of these people because he was a part of this PDP member and APC. So do you want to tell me that he was a part of these people or those people who do to throw money okay. for them to get okay. gathering? Thank you. All right. The second you. question? All right. Yeah, another question I want to ask you, because you mentioned education. And... For my own uh, layman research that I've gone through, I noticed that the rate of illiterate and poverty, if you go to north, the rate is very, very high than any other state or any other region in Nigeria. Okay. And it comes to my understanding that the northerners have been taking the affair of our people for a very long time. And they are still having people living in poverty. They are still having people being uneducated. So do you want to tell me if Congress will become our president, that it will make any difference than what other the past president refused to take care of the people education, remove okay. people from poverty in that region? All right. So please, I want you to answer me this question. My name is Siri. Thank you. Thank All you right, so thank much, you Siri. Do uh, you remember the first question? Well, uh, if I fail to... you, I would remind you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cyril. Firstly, you said the northern region. You didn't say Kano. He ruled Kano for eight years. But is Kano However, good educationally? Kano is much better. All you need to do, Cyril, go online, check Rabiu Musa Konkozo and check what he did in education for the girl child from ensuring that the girl child started to go to school from removing almajaris from the streets from educating training people once you had a first class you understand he established so many institutions training colleges um, um, two universities and um, everything during his time the, the um, scholarships he gave, once you had a first class, even if you were an Igbo girl in Kano, you'd be sent abroad for your master's or PhD. He did that. He spent so much on education. Now, Cyril, the question is not where he left the education in Kano. Your question should be, where did it begin? Before you start comparing the north to the south vis-a-vis -vis the person or the people you are looking at, right? Tell us, where did Tinumbu meet education in Lagos? Where did he leave it? Where did Kwonkozo meet education in Kanu? And where did he leave it? That is the parameter. Not that, where are they now? Now, when you say abject poverty, the whole of Nigeria is in abject poverty. It's even very difficult to start saying that in, the north, in northern Nigeria now, that whatever. Do you know how many Nigerians live beyond, below the poverty line? So we have that problem. Now to the first question, and that is that he was a part of the PDP, just like Peter Obi was a part of the PDP, just like Ladipo Johnson was a part of the PDP and part of the APC. So are you not saying... Hang on. Wait. Yeah? 
Am I saying what? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no, no. Go on. <laughs> Are you not saying now that you're no longer part of the PDP or APC? No, I mean the saint. NMPP. All right. Say, no one is saying he's a saint or anyone is a saint. All right. So we, All right. we, we, we still have that question unanswered, so, but yes. we have yes. another call. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Welcome, Bola. What question do you have for Mr. Yeah. Larry Paul Johnson? Um, first and foremost, uh, what, what I want to ask you that. Um, what, what, um, did you have to know that the rule? Because I, I, I understand that most times, most times during the election, during the election or before the election, when the camp, campaign is, is being uh, conducted, um, they've not been able to meet um, Nigerians' um, demands. Because most times, once come, once come as a manifesto, so some, something come, come up along the line that will like, um, make them be so whatever they've um, come to tell us. I also have like to put, put it in, put it in front that why is it that most times when, when, when they come out with the manifestos through the campaign, they do like stick to that manifesto. Something come up uh, along the line that will not let them to, that, that will not allow them or enable them to like to fulfill their promises. Because that's, okay. that's the the point of conversation. All right. Okay, and that's then, fine. Uh, yeah, so that's why I don't know. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you. Bola. All right, so well, back well, to that question yes. before you get onto this. Yeah, the question about being a part of a being a part of a corrupt system and, and trying to fix it. You you go into politics, their existing parties. You go into those existing parties, and most times, you do not excel there, unless you are really, really, really into it. I told you when Kwankozo was in. Um, on the board of the NDDC. He resigned. Go and find out. It's there. He resigned and said, no, this is the, the sharp practices are too much. We don't want it. So everyone is there. You can decide. I'm not saying any, everyone in PDP is bad. Neither am I saying everyone in APC is bad. I'm not saying that. I'm not, and I'm not saying everyone that has moved out, anyone in labor or anyone in NMPP is an angel or a saint. I'm not saying that. You understand? I'm, uh, I would never say that, you know. But to what um, Bolaho has said, yes, Bolaho, there are two two ways to it. One is either they make unrealistic promises that are not feasible. You understand? They promise heaven and earth, and they know it is impossible. Someone told us some five, eh, not even five years ago, some seven years ago. That it will be one naira to one dollar. You know, it's there. So, and people saw, saw that. And in the euphoria of the moment, people supported, people made noises and everything. And we are where we are at today. The other one is that there are some things that happen naturally. For instance, look at the pandemic. The pandemic came bound to affect the economy, affected the entire world. But what you look at is you look at the competence of your government. How did they react to it? How did they adjust? How is the economy faring? Things like that. So these are the things that um, as much as possible, I mean, that determine... Uh, that might affect... Uh, affect um, promises um, with manifestos and whatever. But what I assure you off is regarding the new Nigeria People's Party, Kwonkozo's manifesto, you will see when it is released, we'll discuss it extensively because no one is perfect, no group of people are perfect, and you keep learning from, I like a phrase he used, I think it was Cyril, yeah. that the, 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 the yearnings, the people, what the people require, and as I said earlier, what we require today might be different from what we require in four years' time. But you will find that that manifesto is going to be realistic. And what we intend to do, what we are attacking, is we want to make sure that the economy recovers and we grow it from bottom up. Not to, from top uh, to bottom? Not top to bottom. Oh, okay. We want to, because we believe that the medium and small scale businessmen in this country are the highest employers of labor, as we all know. And it is important that they get help and that the environment is friendly so that the hard-working Nigerian, especially the hard-working Nigerian youth, we believe that the youth are hard-working. 
You understand? Yeah. But the, 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 the society is stacked or stashed against them. We have to open these things up. We make it possible for Nigerians and the youth especially to be able to trade, to do business, to set up businesses, come together. Look, you have a problem. We say we have a problem with the Yahoo Yahoo boys or what have you. Why is it that no government has done or gone far enough to ensure that the skills that they have and many others have, that we do not turn Nigeria into the ICT hub of West Africa or Africa? You understand? Yeah. So this manifesto is going to generate a lot of heat. A lot of you are going to call, come to us and say, what are you saying? It's never been done. But that is the manifesto Kwonkozo is bringing out. Okay. I look forward to it. All right. So now uh, there's this question. It's in my head. I, I asked it the first time. I want to rephrase and okay. ask it again. All right. But okay, before you go on with your question. Hello. hello. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Um, Money, once again, money is Siri that called back, please. Okay, All right, go welcome ahead. Welcome back, Siri. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I have another question I want to ask you, sir. Oh, God, Siri, I you won't punch me today. Based on your analysis, sir. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You just said that uh, the reason why our people, as in our politicians, do not really uh, fulfill their promises is because some of the promises are not possible. You know, some of the things they say they are going to do for is not possible to fulfill them. Now, you now use a, a pandemic as a comparison and all of that. I want you to break it down a little bit to us, sir. When you say some of these promises are not possible to do it, in what way? Do you want to tell me that our country is not buoyant enough for our politicians to have turned uh, one era to its quote to one dollar? Or do you want to tell me that when somebody comes and says, tell me that serial, if you vote in, I'm going to give you life. I'm going to give you medical, edu uh, medical care and education. Do you want to tell me that our country, Nigeria is not, our economy is not enough for those promises to be made? All right. I want you to break it down to to break it down to our layman understanding, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, right. Cyril. Once before, again. Uh, before we get to that question, remember, um, it's the hot topic on the Coffee Gang on Hot FM ninety three point three. And this morning we have Mr. Ladipo Johnson Esquire, the spokesperson for NNPP Kwankwaso Presidential Campaign Council. So if you have any questions, um, you can of course be a part of the show today. You can call on zero eight one eight two four two six five nine one or zero eight one. Eight zero zero eight nine nine three three or zero one two five two three nine three three. All right, go ahead, sir. Yes, Cyril. Um, basically, what what I was saying was that look, at the time, people are putting together. You see, Nigeria is not. Um, we're not at properly. We're not there yet. Overseas, the moment you become a candidate. They open the books of hello? government. Oh, sorry. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Hi, welcome. Yeah, yeah good morning, uncles, and good morning, guys. Good morning, sir. Yes, yes, yeah. My name is Umar. I'm calling you from first time. All right, Umar. You're welcome. Go yes. ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I can, to the extent, I can agree with the guests. Uh, because I just want to uh, say something, but, you know, politicians move from one place to the other. But, you know, the one thing I want to, I can agree with him is, I know what, I'm from the north, actually, precisely from Kaduna. Okay. Yes. And I work in Lagos. I had a lot of colleagues. Well, uh, Konkoso actually did something a lot in education sector. Uh, at some point, yeah. he had free education in Kano in 2014. On, at all levels. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Because I can, I can, you can verify, it's a verifiable evidence. I know a lot of pilots. I know a lot of medical doctors. Even here in Mimasa, if you go FIRS, you see a lot of people that Concourse sent out of the country for, like, a, for graduate and graduate. A lot of things. He has done a lot. But one thing I noticed, I don't know whether it's in him, he actually have this kind. So I want to ask this uh, guest that why is it very difficult for Konkoso like uh, like 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 to accept that uh, I I brought up this guy as a politician. I build him up. I build him up. But why is it difficult for Konkoso to to accept 
that since I'm not in power, this is the man in power, let me allow him to do the best he can do, even though I not sought him. Like what happened between him and the, the, the can do of do cannot do can do Yes, yes, yes. So, and why is it difficult for Kwan Council to accept that, yes, this can, let me give this guy a free, free, free ride, let him operate freely okay. without, uh, without actually intervening into his government or even though I'm not sure him. But actually, let me confess, Kongoso is a good man. He has a lot of agenda in him. And he's actually, to the extent, he's not corrupt. And he helped not. In fact, he's one of the open eyes in the northern Nigeria that anybody that was that is in government, he has to do more than what his predecessors do. Because he has done a lot. So for Ganzu to be, Ganzu to be accepted in Kano, he has to make sure he has done more than what Konkoso did. And uh, actually, it's a trend. It's a trend. And okay. I agree with him. And actually, it's a, it's a com I commend him, actually. All right. So Thank you. question of allowing somebody that you brought up, that you not thought, to have a free ride, let him do what he feel like he can do. All right. All right. Umar, no, so that he can much. attend to your question. All, All right. right. Well, uh, let's um, have another question so we can just Okay. All right. Together. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. All right. Welcome. Hello? Hello, I can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, what is your name? This is don't be sending me this. Don't be sending me number this. Uh, this no, is no, the wrong number. number. This is Hot FM 93.3. Now, that question, uh, and, and it takes me back to what you said initially, that uh, Konkoso has a lot of, um, you know, he has been through a lot of things, and it's not going to be good for him to be obese vice. I'm not saying it's not going to be good. Okay. I'm saying that, um, sorry, I'm just cutting in here. Yes, please. What actually happened? What? Uh, forget Obi and Konkoso. Yes. The supporters themselves would not have allowed it. Okay. You, you so it's not about Kwankwaso alone. Okay, now Obi. Umar asked the question, yeah. why is it difficult for Kwankwaso to, to allow, to allow the, the people he has trained? My, my brother Umar, so no, um, all I know, thank God, I um, was already with Kwankwaso towards the end of his um, gubernatorial tenure. That's the second term. Yeah, the second term. I was already with him. Uh, I believe that um, from the moment, I know I'm going to create more trouble. From the moment Ganduje got the nomination and uh, from the moment he was sworn in, he was already a free man. You understand? Kwonkozo did not even go I remember, I think he didn't even go for the swearing-in because he has a cult-like followership in the north, especially Kanu. And he said, I remember, I was in Kanu. He said, I'm not going, Ladipo, because the new governor let him have, you understand? So what happened? Him, what happened was that Ganduje started on his path and uma you see your an your answer is in your um, assessment of ganduje's eight years if you assess that as he had his free hand he did better than Konkoso or did well then you are right in saying maybe Konkoso didn't want to leave him or what have you that it's as simple as that but i will tell you that um from where I was sitting or standing, which is not totally inside, you understand, I'm not from Kano, I don't speak Hausa. I saw that from the conversations around me, I saw that, yes, he had, um, he wanted to do things his own way, and they left him. Now, in leaving him, you cannot tell Kwonkozo that because you've been governor eight years, and because someone else is there, you cannot participate in politics, especially when you have your Kwankwasea movement and you have people in the House of Assembly, House of Reps, Senate, and what have you. So he still has to participate in politics. And politics is about coming together. If they do not feel that the person piloting the, um, what do you pilot, the plane at that time or driving the vehicle at that time is going in the right direction, then they have the right to say, oh, let's Hello, good morning. come against him again. All right, All right good, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah, my name is Chris. 
All right, welcome, Chris. Where are you calling from? All right, go ahead. Yes, I just want to agree with uh, the man in the studio that the obedience would never allow B to be to play a second fiddle to anybody in this country. Exactly. Because OB is unique. OB has a message. OB is visionary. OB is competent. He has capacity. OB is taking up. It's, it's like the beacon of the Nigerian youth. And it's actually unique right. to the things that want him to do those two. I understand so that. OB is our choice. Okay, okay so but do you we have understand. A question, do, you, do you have a do you have question have, for him as well? I don't have any questions. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I have this question. We All have right. another yeah. caller. Hello. Good morning. All right. Please make sure. No, you I call wanted back. to ask this question. Uh, it's right. important, uh, most especially in the southeast. There's yeah. a situation going on about the fact that Namdi Kanu is not supposed to still be in jail, and there's, of course, there's a point where they're saying um, um, uh, or Sunday Bo is supposed to come back to the country because they're fighting the cause, and uh, according to these people, they're not terrorists. We say uh, a conquest who becomes president of the country. How do you think he's going to handle these situation? Well, I think we. Um, I. I wanted to say I can't speak for him, but um, yeah, he's spokesperson. I'm a spokesperson, <laughs> but not when it comes to something this specific. Okay. Look, um, it's like with the manifesto. It depends on a lot of things. You understand? If you have agitations, which is normal in a democracy, you have agitations then government must address those ag agitations. You as well must give government time to address those ag agitations. Certain things don't happen overnight. You understand? So we, there's no one fooling anyone. If I have something I've brought to your table, and you say, wait, and I see within a year, two years, nothing is happening, I'll know that you're fooling me. You, you get what yes. I'm saying? So... I know that um, what we have planned for the country will see each area, each region, and in fact, to the locality, I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, we'll see them having access. What is Kwankwase about? You know, we've been talking about education. Yes. Yeah. The basic thing, because people always ask me, this is your Kwankwase, what is it about? And I always say, well, it's difficult to define. But basically, it is about access. Access, if everybody has access to healthcare, access to education, access to this, access to that, there is more equity within the system. If there's equity within the system, then one region will not feel that um, they're being, you understand, bullied and whatever by others okay nigerians have been clamoring for something called restructuring yeah do you think that uh, the kwankwasiya movement when elected or if elected president of nigeria is going to look into that and how do you think they're going to deal with that situation when i said when and if i uh, know i'm even answering <laughs> okay you don't know question let me answer okay i'm, uh, I'm prophesying okay great when Kwankwasiya is elected right by god's grace you will find, in fact, from the moment we come up with a manifesto, I'm telling you, I was telling him the other day and the small committee we had, I said, and he was joking. He says, you are the spokesman. You're going to face the fire. Yes. He, you will see from that manifesto that <laughs> um, the issue of restructuring or whatever word you want to use, because no one can define, no, there's no one definition for restructuring. What you believe is restructuring might not be what he believes. You understand? So that's the first thing. But the issue of the development and the rights and progress of each area, each region will be addressed. Because they will have access to address their issues. I know what I'm saying. Uh, well, now, just give me. It's a big. Give it, us one week. You will see. It. Okay. Now I would love to see. I, I. I. Hopefully, when it comes out, we can invite you back definitely, to to the definitely. station. Now I, I want to say this because I know a lot of people, most especially in the south and in the west, yeah. they've always pushed it that whenever it comes to restructuring uh, culture in Nigeria, the north will come and you know they'll play dilly dally with it, mm -hmm. and then uh, there there is the position of uh, Niger Delta is making a amount of money, and the north is not bringing as much. Since 
seven years ago, yes, Senator Bola Tinumbu helped birth this government. He was one of the people, APC, were shouting restructuring. Has he shouted about restructuring in the last seven years? Has he? He hasn't. So, so if he's not about, doing it, NMPP shouldn't do it. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying you don't have to, you see, for me, there are prejudices in this country. We are all guilty. If you use the R word, the restructuring word yes. in the North, before you even begin to vote, you've lost. And why is that? That is because they have their prejudices. As we have our prejudices here in the southern part of the country. So as a politician, you have to understand that even when you are bringing something, what I just want to say to you is that the man in Zamfara will benefit from his gold. And by God's grace, between within the four four years of Konkozo, the man in the southern part of the country, I don't know why we say South South. Mm. Is there anything like South South? The man in the southern part of the country will stop feeling as if they're using his gas and his oil to his detriment. That is what we're working towards. No one is perfect, but we'll come up with a program that Nigerians will see. If they're broad-minded enough, I'm not abusing Nigerians, to open their minds to it, they will see that, okay, this might be a template to begin to roll back the um, debt profile of this country. The seven years we've had, not just seven years, even before these seven years, the time we've had of degradation and whatever. We have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. But one thing I have to say is that Forget Kwonkozo, forget Obi, forget all of them. It's not about them. It's about us. We the people. We all have a role to play. Because even when you vote them in, we have to make sure that we tell them the truth. We have to keep them on that path, the promises they have made. And uh, someone asked the question about why they cannot hold on to yes. um, um, Malahan also. Yes. If you cannot do what you have promised us. Tell us the reason why. What has changed and everything. So I think it is important that let's look at it from a democratic um, a democracy as a whole, not any party now. We all have a role to play. Okay. You understand? Oh, wow. I wish we had more time. We would have gone on. But thank you so much for uh, coming uh, to our studios this morning to talk to us about uh, your political party and uh, what you have in stock for Nigeria come uh, 2023. And we look forward to your manifesto. I heard that it's in a week's time. Yes, within, I think, a week. Latest next week will be... Well, you people are not sure yet. Is no, it I'm African sure. time thing? No, it's not African time. The reason why I say latest is because i've been in lagos oh okay if i were in abuja last mm. night i'd know for certain that um on so 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 dates one thing i'll give to you though you you were very early today so thank you thank uh, we pray that that continues as well thank you all right i want to thank you so much for listening we want to thank you so much for listening this morning we have been in the studio with uh the spokesperson for nmpp and of course kwankwa seah Say a movement, yeah. and uh, he in person of uh, Ladipo Johnson Esquire. And uh, hopefully, next week, uh, tomorrow, we'll have another guest. Uh, you know, on the way to 2023 election, general election, who will give us Nigerians what we want? Most importantly, for me, get your PVCs ready. All right, thank you again for being a part of the show. Thank you for your calls and listening to us. We get to do this again tomorrow, but do make sure you stick around. The news is coming up in a short bit. Then from 10 o'clock will be the Lava Lounge with Sweet Okwe. Have yourself a fantastic. Monday, and thank you again from Amani Utoka as well as Jude on the Coffee Gang this morning. Good morning.
lied and I was never too good at algebra But our first date just broke the hex When I took your number and we cracked the formula And reasons why you should replace my ex Now nah, you got the boy tripping, you trace my steps Quick SWOT analysis, let's weigh your strengths Down to risk it all, girl, I place my bet Could you check every box, just like my favorite crepes Let's see, your soft spoken and your heart's golden The way your arch poking, baby, Lord knows that I can slow stroke the weight off your shoulders Love it when you super soak it, osmosis I caught the bug and no, it's not COVID You're like a drug and I need more doses Now catch a service, take